at Midland, Texas. It's May 6, 2017. I, I, I did a couple uh, podcast shows, uh, one yesterday, another one today, uh, uh, one called Portal to Justice. You'll find it on my Facebook wall. And then the one today uh, called Zeph Report, and there's links on it. I, I think they're really good shows to, to listen to uh, where I describe what happened with this incredible true story that's backed up with so much evidence. One story I told that, that I kind of want to uh, act out in, in this video is what happened on the day that I was shot. Okay, Because the topic was motives for murder, and that's the why question. And, and until we can arrest somebody, then, then uh, that's still speculation, I guess. It could be the underground facility. Uh, it could be the, what I call the first murder attempt, and, and, and maybe a, a guy got killed here in my house two weeks earlier and it was a, a revenge. Uh, uh, it could be the life insurance money or it could be that a burglar got trapped in a burglary inside my home because I had you know, reported my first burglary to this home 14 months before that and, and, uh, and, and it was repeated, it continued. And it, it, it has continued all along because there was underground access to this home. And so what happened on this day it was January 28, 2012. It was a weekend. Uh, I was off work. I was planning on going to work. I'd, actually, I had to fly to Houston on, uh, on Monday. Had, had my plane tickets already. Had a business meeting. And uh, I had plans. You know, it's like most people that I guess that, that get killed or me. I never worked another day after that day. It was over. You know, I mean, uh, my whole life changed, you know. And truly was ruined is what happened. And from this violent, senseless crime by these violent criminals. So anyway, what happened today is I went grocery shopping, and, and that's another uh, blessing because I give God all the praise and glory that when I got out of the hospital 10 days later, I had groceries in my house because I really wasn't in no shape after being shot and having, having the heel bone cut out of my foot. And uh, at that time, I had a wound vac. I had, I had a home health care nurse was coming here three times a week. I wasn't in shape to go grocery shopping, but that day... The day that I shot, I went grocery shopping. And because of all these repeated crimes that I had called the police, called the Texas Ranger, called the FBI, even the DEA twice, uh, I, I had secured my, my doors trying to figure out where they're getting in. And the only door that you could physically get in was the front door. This is the front door. Uh, my garage door was screwed to the wall. You couldn't get in the garage door, period. Okay, I couldn't even use my own garage. Okay. And, and then all the other doors had additional locks on them that were physically locked where you could not uh, uh, get, in, get in that door. So there wasn't going to be no lock picking. I had one door you can get in. Of course, at the time, I didn't know they were coming from the ground, hidden underground entrance, already been made, all that stuff. You know, I thought they was coming in a regular way. And so I come in my front door here, and I got my groceries, and, and I ain't gone that long. And I look over... And I see a cushion out of place in uh, on my on my furniture, my couch over here. And uh, of course, I've rearranged furniture and stuff. But but just to show you here, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm a real neat person, you know, tidy, one of them kind of people. And I will just show you around my around my home, right here. And as I turn it around, you can see everything's in place, okay. And so when a cushion is out of place, I look over and go, oh, criminal's been in my home again. And and you know. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, telling you this is what it looks like today, okay? This is telling you, you know, okay, here's what it looks like today. And so you can see when I, I noticed, because that's who I am, that uh, once again we had these criminals been that, that, that don't even concern with the law at all. That's a felony. That's a burglary invitation. And of course, now we know it's theft of services. They're getting in there still in electricity. They're still in heating, cooling, shelter. And, and so they're stealing from me. They're taking money out of my pocket, putting it in their pocket. And um, so I realized at, at that point that somebody had been in my house once again. Okay, That's what had been going on. That's why I've been going to the police. And, um, and I get this brilliant idea. I thought this is just a great idea because I couldn't figure out where they're coming in at. You know, and it's... Uh, I mean, I, I was tried all kinds of things. I'm a very logical, systematic person, technical person. I'm an IT guy. And, uh, uh, and so I get this idea. I'm going to tie wire the, the spare bedroom door shut, and that's going to compartmentalize my house. 
and then so if there's a trap door in like one of the, in the in one of the guest bedrooms, then they ain't gonna be running in there, you know, because what was happening, I was figuring out that one, there was more than one, so I was being ganged up on, you know, I mean, I was sure of that. And then they're doing a lot of diversion tactics. I mean, I'd have burglar alarms going off here and really think that I have them over here, that, that I got them in this room or whatever, that they're fixing to be caught. And then all of a sudden, a burglar alarm go off on the other side of the house and I take off to the other side of the house and I get back and nobody's in there. You know, and so that was going on. And I think that this day of the murder attempt or the shooting, that when the burglar alarms were going off over and over and over, as I told the nurse and as I told the detective, uh, I think they were wanting me to chase up in the attic because that's where the burglar alarms were going off. I think it was one of them diversion. But, but, but he'd been playing that game for a while, and I wasn't playing that game. You know, I wasn't going to go chase the alarm anymore, okay? And... Uh, and so I, I think maybe that was part of it. More than just taunting uh, evil stuff, I think maybe they actually had a purpose for setting off the burglar alarm. And then, as I mentioned that show, I just literally felt like I was herded like an animal, okay? Because it, it was like they're making noise over here, and I'm the animal, and they're waiting for me to walk in front of the kill zone, the kill shot. And when, as soon as I walk in front, boom, they shoot me. Boom, I fall. My phone lines are cut. I'm supposed to die. I mean, I'm shot from a foot away, at point blank range, directly in our artery, I should have died. You know, God gets all the praise and glory. Anyway, let me show you these doors back here. Let's go this way. Okay, I'm, I'm back in my hallway, and, and where I've got the camera is almost sitting in my bedroom, and it's looking at the guest uh, bathroom here, okay? And then so there's a little hallway here, and, and I'm going to move the camera here in a minute, and that's one, of, one guest uh, bedroom, and then on the other side over across, is an uh, identical mirror guest bedroom. So there's two bedrooms side by side, and then right in the middle there is a little closet, okay? And actually, attic entrance is up there in that little closet. And so what I did was I got some of this tie wire. This is the tie wire right here, okay? And it's an aluminum tie wire, okay? And so I got the tie wire, and I, uh, I went in, and like I said, this is what I called the brilliant idea. I shut this door, okay, and I shut this door right there, okay, and then I come in here, and I tie wired that door knob, okay, I'm going to show you here, to the closet door knob like that, okay, over to this door knob, just like that. And, and then I finished this up right here. I shut this door and I tied this one, okay? And so, and then I cut the wire and there we go, okay? So when you try to open this door physically, it pushes, it pulls against the wire, okay? And I had a little tighter in this, of course, but it basically, none of them doors could you open because of the same thing. It pulled it pulled against it. So all these doors were physically tie wired shut. And and so from then that's all blocked off. Okay. So then I'm gonna I got my gun, okay? Because you gotta remember this is a felony home invasion. And people breaking in your home are dangerous and, and it got proven that day because they tried to kill me. They shot me, okay? What I think happened was I trapped a burglar in here and I didn't know it. Okay, and there's evidence I found when I got out of the hospital, and and so instead of calling the police and going, I'm a burglar, you know, committed five thousand crimes again there. We got underground hidden access, and uh, and this guy trapped us in there, and uh, it's really his fault. We had to shoot him. Is that dumb? They're a burglar in a burglary, and they get caught and they shoot me, and I got a feeling they're trying to blame me. Literally, you know. I mean, that's just nuts, is what that is. You know, that that's criminal burglar criminal mentality right there is that you're blaming the crime victim okay but i think that's what happened because what happened when i get back from the hospital besides finding the secret police of my home on the 29th that we still don't know who they are okay to this day we know who two of them are april chandler and rosie rodriguez and we think one's chad simpson and that's basically all we got we got about six seven others we don't know who they are or what they're doing right others still in evidence stage in the crime scene and so to come in here, 
the police come in here, all they have to do is untie the wire, okay? And if they don't untie the wire, then they can get their little pocket little cutters and cut the wire, okay? Either way, however they want to do it. But what you don't have to do is tear that tear this door off the hinge. And when I return from the hospital, the hinge is torn from the wall right here. Okay, from the bottom that door is, and, I, and I'm gonna show you here, I'm going into the bathroom, and, the, and they're still there, okay, that right here is prime marks, okay, on the top of the door jam. Now I painted this whole home when, when, uh, when, when I moved in here, the entire home, and I can promise you there were no prime marks. See, no prime marks on that one, there ain't no prime marks on this one, and there ain't no prime marks anywhere in this house, okay? Them happened, while I was in the hospital, and I believe it happened as soon right after I got shot and called out, because I, got, I think I think I trapped a criminal in here, a burglar, and uh, and they were panicked because I was on the other side of that door with a gun. Okay, I mean I mean I'm a homeowner trying to protect my home. I have as much right to protect my life and my home as anybody else does, right? And uh, and so I think and you know that's really what happened, and so. I was systematically going through the house, searching, looking under the beds, looking under the couches. I'm, I'm checking the closets because I thought somebody's in my house, okay? And so here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this around, and we're going to walk through here, and I'm going to flip it around, okay? So I'm coming here, and I'm, I'm going through, and I spent some time in my living room. I come through, and I'm systematically going through my house, okay? And then uh, come in through the dining room. Here we are. Okay, and then and then through the kitchen. Okay, and here and and then you get through the kitchen here, and then that's where we get to the utility room. Okay, and so this is my little bitty utility room right here, and this is the room that I was shot at. Okay, um, I always tell people I was shot under that. That's a different cabinet though, but I was shot in a cabinet that looked just like that or similar to that. That wasn't put together right, okay? And and what I was doing was walking to the back door, and that's a different back door I replaced because the one I had had the other locks on it. And so I had set my gun down. I was walking to my back door. I was going to go out in the garage, and, and as soon as I got set in front of that cabinet, boom, I fell to the ground. I didn't know. I didn't see the shooter. I didn't see their gun. They ambushed me. That's what they did. You know, they shot me from literally about a foot away directly at an artery, okay? And, and and when I fell to the ground, I jumped right back up and I fell right back down because my leg was shot. And uh, then I screamed for help. So then they, they they literally were listening to me scream for help and waiting for me to die. They shot and left me for dead. That's that's a fact. I mean that's that's the truth. And uh, once they're once they're identified, which we can identify them because we know who two of them secret police are. Once we find out, then, then they're gonna uh, end up going, "Yep, we heard him. We sure did." And we were waiting on him to die. And, and that because that's what was going on that night. And so uh, the last thing is, uh, is in this room a few months before, a person that was here at my house in this room asked me this weird question one day and says, what's different about this room? That ain't that a weird thing. This room's only like six foot. I mean, look how small it is, okay? I mean, it's tiny little bitty laundry room, okay? And, and, you know, so I'm going around, you know, and talking about, well, the, the ceiling up here, the, you know, half of the, half of the texture on the ceiling right above this cabinet's gone, like they'd taken out that section of the roof, you know. So I described how I, how I'd sprayed that with acoustic and painted it, and how the, how the tiles not, but none of that was really the right answer. The real truth was, is, is the cabinet, not this one, right, but, but the one that looked similar to it was rigged with uh, hidden access. I believe it was a trap door. And, and that was the trap door I'd been told about. And that's how they come in. I also said on the video today that I believe that that is, there's three days, I shot on the 28th. The 29th, the secret police are caught in my home. And, and February 1st, three days later, is the only known or official entry by police, okay, per the police reports. And when I was at the hospital, Rosie Rodriguez and her friend come up there and had me sign uh, a consent to search form. And they were going to go to my home. They're going to start the investigation. I'm up there in the hospital. I'm like, why did y'all wait so long? Three days. I, I mean, I was ready to get on with this. Let's stop these crimes. I was actually 
happy that the police were finally involved because at first I just really thought it was incompetence. You know, I mean, I really thought it was. I, you know, I mean, I never suspected corruption, police corruption, dirty cops, uh, any of that. You know, I mean, I just thought it was incompetence. And, uh, and so why did you wait three days? But now I think what they did is that they poured concrete. You know, they had to fill it in first because you couldn't pour concrete over an open hole. So they had to fill it in and then pour concrete. And, and because they knew that, they, you know, I mean, I had survived the murder attempt. It wouldn't have mattered if I would have died. Then, then all my property, you know, would have been dispersed. And, and really there was um, an additional half million dollars if I died by accident. And Rosie Rodriguez... The detective, the one that got caught sneaking in my house, was friends with the primary beneficiary, and 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 there was a lot of money. There's 1.5 million in mainly life insurance, but uh, a lot of that was if I died by accident. And of course, uh, I, I sincerely believe Rosie was going to call it an accident. She called this failed murder attempt an accident after being caught inside my home. So I'm going to take you and show you some pictures of what the cabinet looked like before. Okay, and what I got here, and, and, and that's what I showed you already is the Primarchs. This is an older picture. But I want to show you on the nursing notes at 1127. I crawled out at 1042. Okay, so less than an hour later. And, and I, I'm saying there's sirens going off. Okay, so the burglar alarm's going off. I'd already said that. And that's, the nurse documented that, which is much different than what uh, Chandler, Officer Chandler said. Uh, Officer Chandler t writes in her, her documentation that Buddy said he was locking up for the night and knocked over his gun and shot himself. And I never said that. She made that lie up, you know, and then comes sneaking to my house, too. Okay, and then I also there's a voice recorder which is now stolen. Okay, and and the last person to have the voice recorder was April Chandler, the officer April Chandler. But well, once again, the alarms kept going off. But then the other main thing here, I showed you this was it says I was tie wiring my doors to keep them out. That was used to oh he's crazy type deal. But I mean I'm literally you know they had underground access and I'm trying to figure out what's going on here you know and then so that's why I was tie wiring doors and explain that. This is at the hospital admittance form. It's uh, uh, to have me uh, held for detention without a warrant at Midland Memorial Hospital by Officer April Chandler, and it was done at 11.03. I crawled out at 10.42, and, 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 and so look at the time there, 11.03. I crawled out at 10.42, and, and here's Officer Chandler up there at the hospital going, Mr. Webb showed paranoia to the extent he caused himself to suffer a gunshot wound to the ankle. Now, that's interesting wording, right? It's not that he shot himself. It, it, it's he caused himself. And so, uh, you know, I'll tell you the real truth what I think here is that what she was saying, that, that what she was calling the paranoia is that I had a burglar in my house and I tie-wired them doors and I trapped that burglar. And that's what the paranoia part was. And caused him to suffer means that, that either her or one of her friends, of course, shot me in my home. They were justifying the, the attempted murder of the homeowner because they got caught a burglar during a burglary. That's how I read that. The other thing I said today was that the person that's alleged to be involved in the shooting made a statement a couple weeks after I got out of the hospital. said, you don't know how many lives you run with your idiocy. Well, I think once again, my idiocy was I noticed that I had a burglar in my home and they got trapped in that room when I tie them doors. I didn't know it, but I think that was what the actual reference to the idiocy part was. But what it really told me was a lot of lives were going to be run. Well, how can, how can I be here by myself and be shot by, uh, by a person? There's only one shooter for sure, right? I've been a lot of lives, and, and, I, and, and I think that comes into the underground facility that a half dozen people have said and what they were doing in that underground facility, okay? I think that once, uh, that's what that statement meant, that once it's found out what they were doing down there, when somebody was trying to kill me up here, then that was going to have, that was going to ruin their lives. And then, and then the third statement was my dad, who's no longer alive, on a conversation with him that I believe he knew what was going on. And my dad said, yeah, but, but, but you tie wired the door shut. You had the safety off on your gun. And I said, I was under home invasion. Okay. But the, the real thing about that is I never told anybody the safety was off on my gun, but it was. And I don't know how he knew that. The only people that could possibly know that 
had to be here in my house because I hadn't told anybody that. And so that was three people, uh, Chandler there, that first person, and my dad. That makes me believe that, that you've got this group out here of people trying to blame the crime victim. They come, they loaded their guns and come to my home. That burglar come into my home. I didn't invite that burglar into my home. That's a burglar habitation felony charge. They had been stealing services from me. Heating, cooling, electricity, light, shelter, okay? And uh, and they're not paying taxes, not paying rent. You know, they're taking money out of my pocket, putting it in their pocket. They're stealing from me, period, okay? And so uh, I wanted to show you that one. Let me flip this around. And I want to show you the, the cabinet here, okay? This is an old picture. The door was gone on this cabinet when I bought the home, okay? This, was, this is not the one that's there now, but it looks similar, okay? The kickboard is gone at the bottom, okay? And I was shot from two inches above ground, okay? The shelves are not put together. The parts are not even all there. This is one funky cabinet from day one, from the time I moved in. And I now believe because it was rigged underground as a hidden hidden access into my home, okay? And so that was a cabinet. And, and the question I was asked that day, what's different about this room? Well, I think the real answer was, is that cabinet's rigged as a trap door. And then it also happened to be the kill zone because I'm shot this direction. Once I figured out direction of shot, then I knew I was shot from a person under the cabinet shooting this direction back at me. Okay, I was walking to the back door right there and, and the entrance wounds on the front outside of my foot. So I knew the gun was pointed this way out of here. Okay. And we also know size of pellets and is different than the, than what in my foot were different from the gun. So it's proven I wasn't shot with my own gun. I believe I was cut to make it look that way. I said that in the show today, but I want to show you that funky cabinet. Okay. And, and I want to show you once again here, I put a measuring stick on it to measure the height on this. This is the same funky cabinet, okay? Showing the bang, the blood was here. But one thing that's real interesting is underneath this cabinet is a Kansas City Chiefs hat, okay? Now, I know for a fact that evidence says I was shot by somebody under that cabinet. Okay, and so, uh, and that, but when I pulled it out, there was concrete there. That's where the new cabinet got put in. Okay, and the, but I found a Ch Kansas City Chiefs hat there. And so, uh, obviously, that hat was put there by the people that poured the concrete. I think that happened in the three mystery days between when the secret police were caught in my house on the 29th of January and the only known official entry by police on February 1st. Okay, so, so some, whoever was involved in covering up that, you know, the crime scene, staging the crime scene, putting the concrete, all that, I believe you had a Kansas City Chiefs fan. This is Dallas country, okay? I'm a Cowboys fan, and most of the people around here are Cowboys fans. You don't have a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans, okay? And, I mean, there are some, of course, from every, every uh, team. But, but what was interesting is uh, the sister of the previous homeowner calls me, Susan McGaina. She, I think she's in El Paso. And she had seen that picture of that Kansas City Chiefs hat. And she mentioned, without me even asking or even thinking about it, she mentioned that they had a brother, okay, Mike Lawhon had a brother that was a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that she mentioned that, you know. I mean, she offered that information up. And I found that Kansas City Chiefs hat under the, under the cabinet from where I shot, you know. And then later, a friend on the Internet, because... Uh, Mike Lawhon, if you remember, there's a previous homeowner. His death certificate is in Fort Worth, but uh, the neighbor across the street, Marilyn Deluji, has told me twice that he died in this house. And one time she said, I should know, right? And, yeah, she convinced me, you know. And uh, But the mom, Susan Tennis, died last year, I believe. And you go to her obituary, and there's a Kansas City Chiefs emblem on her obituary. You know, it's just an interesting little thing. Anyway, I'm going to cut this off. I, I wanted to kind of explain that. I got a question that today on the podcast. Go look at the Zeph report in the Porthole to Justice. You find that link on my Facebook under Buddy Wayne Webb or Buddy.Web.353. And also then my YouTube channel is Buddy Webb, one word. And uh, uh, y'all have a good weekend.